the deities and great ones who stood like a protective fortress guru raghavendra for more than 30 years i have been propagating your glory surmounting all the difficulties and yet i am unable to fathom why i have to face such a trial now o mahalakshmi of kalluru venkatramana i tied the symbolic coconut and prayed in your sanctum for your blessings and you graced me with a good alliance for my daughter but how can you now allow such a predicament for me kamakshi amma when i was 20 i composed the song anadai nan meaning an orphan i am and rendered it in your shrine for many days you blessed me then to become a poet and a writer and earn celebrity everywhere look my child has to get the sacred thread of wedlock knotted around her neck in a few moments can you remain silent in mangadu knowing what all untoward things are happening here please come here post haste o oh, navabrindavana gurus you gave me the knowledge to write about you all in the same coverage the first one of its kind and now i submit that you should all grace the fruition of my daughter's marriage without any hitch o oh, kanchi mahaswami you made me shine as amman satyanathan when i was an unknown entity as satyanathan i now pray that you should change the extraordinary situation prevailing here now and bring happiness and peace to me was my supplication to the deities gurus at that moment all such thoughts occurring in a flash as it were i was anxious what the sub registrar would say then and with a prayer at heart looked at him the sub registrar nodded he said suggestive of proceeding further and so i si- uh, signed first then my daughter the bridegroom his father and some witnesses followed suit providing me great relief i requested him to have some refreshment and then accompanied him to the gate before getting back to the dais the hall was then overflowing with invitees but the search for the bombs was still in operation at that time with some regained confidence i went to the office room the police official sitting there asked me whether i had some enemies and so too if the bridegroom's father had some force followed by the question whether i had suspicion about anyone sir though you are duty bound to raise such queries i do not have the mind now to answer them have you got any information please no nothing so far the search is not over yet only on its completion we can say something i then took leave of the official with some confidence saying the time for mangalya dharana is fast approaching i shall go to the stage and come later my mind and my eyes were surveying all around though i did not leave the stage for the next 20 minutes and every minute i was engaged in meditating upon shri guru raja the auspicious time then arrived and the sacred thread was knotted around my daughter's neck symbolic of the wedlock i shed tears of joy thinking of all the deities and shri guru raja for a moment i visualized what could have happened if things had turned the other way exhibiting my anguish in the uncontrollable tears flowing out of my eyes then after the muhurtam the dining hall was teeming with guests when the invitees started taking leave of me i could not tell them to spend more time and leave at leisure for i was anxious that the marriage hall should have as few members as possible it was 11:30 am and in the next 10 minutes i got call, a call from the office room and went there we have searched everywhere there are no bombs anywhere the police said soaring my thoughts to the skies a disconsolate mind though back to its normal state was yet crisscrossing with thoughts about several uncertainties the question the police had asked that is whether i had suspicions on anyone was ringing in my ears i asked the manager have you noted where the call had come from the police also asked me this 
but since we don't have a caller id it is not known replied the manager which was rather surprising yes in sri vairamuthu's marriage hall the absence of such a facility with so much technological advancement was certainly a matter to be startled about did you ask the telephone exchange the people here should have asked immediately but they were busy contacting me when i asked them after a considerable lapse of time the telephone people could not throw any light on it but now that it has proved to be a hoax it may not be of significance to you now but i should know i must be made aware as to who has been behind this mental torture for me at least i should know from which part of the city the call had emanated from i thought and took the manager also with me to the dining hall for lunch telling him i shall come to the office room later after lunch my close relatives called me and asked there is a talk in certain quarters is it true i wonder when wondered whether some people had come to know of the background of things supposed to have been done discreetly and asked them what are the people telling for participation in your daughter's marriage it is said that you have arranged for a change in the mantralaya swami's program of visit to chennai getting it advanced was such a talk heard in this mantaba no at nangnallur and outside too in fact you will feel hurt if you are told what you had done for advancing the swami's visit according to the sources spreading that information i don't need all those to be explained sri guru raja knows everything i said but in when it was made to know made it uh, made to known to me that uh, i was supposed to have given a large amount to the shriman i regretted that there should be such a wagging of tongues attributing to me things that i had not done some time later ramakrishna achar who had gone to nangnallur mat after conducting the marriage rituals informed me from there the moolarama puja is over there uh, here please keep the purna kumbha ready at your place his message made me feel exultant that i was privileged and blessed to have be having the swami on such an auspicious occasion at the same time i could not but help feeling that even if the swami should not be coming it should be all right since the aspersion cast on me would be proved as being fallacious at 4 pm that day sri anand rao the dwarapalaka of the swami telephoned and asked me to be res- uh, ready to receive the pitatipati a little later he himself telephoned again and said it appears the pandicherry chief minister is ready there to welcome the swami therefore the swami after going to tambaram will proceed straight to pandicherry from there skipping the vadapalani streamat at this time of course it caused some disappointment to me but that was overcome by the feeling that my fairness in conduct had stood vindicated that is that i had not got the dates of his visit to chennai altered for my sake i consoled myself that his darshan at the central station the previous day was itself a god send the reception in the evening was a gala event those in the publication line came in large number and blessed the couple though everything ended well i could not however sleep properly that night if that new if the news had leaked down what a chaos would have set in if the police force the sniffer dogs and fire engines had been stationed near the kalyana mandapam and not in the nearby streets what would have been the consequence would everyone have run helter skelter was this warning message intended for me or the bridegroom's father or was it for sri vairamuthu were the thoughts passing through my mind at that silent hour i was mulling whether somebody inimical to sri vairamuthu could have done this just to create mental tension to him at the time of his son's marriage celebration in the presence of chief minister sri m karunanidhi but whatever could be the reason unfathomable though the mental distress that i was subject to for those 2 hours was something that should not have befallen me the night having passed in such visualizations 
In the morning, I took the married couple and the father of the bridegroom to Mangadu Sri Kamakshi Amman Temple. And there, while waiting for the seva receipt, I saw in a vernacular daily the news about the bomb threat at the marriage hall the previous day printed in bold letters. I kept the paper aside to avoid the others in my group knowing about the news. The previous evening itself, Sri Vasu Murari had called me aside and brought to my attention such news that had been reported in the evening paper, Malay Murusu. It had been published in three columns in the last page, the saving grace to me being that my name had been erroneously mentioned in the news coverage as Satya Narayanan instead of Satya Nathan, a mistake that the police official had committed while noting down my identity, about which I also kept quiet then, as being of little significance. If my name had been published correctly as Amman Satyanathan, undoubtedly many would have abstained from attending the reception in the evening. I told Vasumurari, please keep the paper aside. Nobody here knows about these things till now. If it comes to be known later, let it happen so. I shall tell you everything that had taken place at the appropriate time. Of course, none in the marriage house had come to know that day the events that had taken place till noon. After praying soulfully to Manga Daman and offering my thanks to her for gracing the completion of my daughter's marriage without any hindrance, tears blinding my eyes, we all left for the marriage house in our vehicle. During the journey, I thought there was no point in keeping things secret and so told the bridegroom's father all that had taken place at the marriage hall till noon the previous day. He was simply dumbfounded on hearing those nightmarish experiences I had gone through. Later, when we saw the morning papers, the news of the bomb threat had received wide coverage with even the picture of the marriage hall printed. Despite my request to the police officials not to give message about these unfortunate happenings to the press. And strangely, most of the papers had reported that the couple to be married, their relatives and all the invitees had been evacuated from the Kalyanamantapam to conduct the search operations for unearthing any concealed explosives. And after getting doubly confirmed about the non-existence of such objects in the building, they were again allowed entry inside and the marriage was thereafter allowed to be conducted in the hall. While such reporting may appear to be a routine kind of dissemination of news with some twist, if things had really happened in the manner portrayed in the papers, it would have affected many in a profound way. Undoubtedly, the deities and the gurus I have been worshipping and praying to have stood as a strong fortress to prevent the occurrence of any mishap, any such mishap, which would have brought a stigma to me. The newly married couple then left for Erode that noon and after seeing them off, when I came back to the marriage hall, I heaved a big sigh of relief in the presence of my relatives numbering about 30 remaining at the Kalyana Mantapam till then. Many of them, having read the morning papers, observed if it had been known then that the sniffer dogs had been brought here because of the bomb threat, the entire marriage hall would have become empty in no time. Did you not also know then about the threat? Of course, I could not say that I had known it. And if it had been debated whether I had done what I had done was in order or no, otherwise the answer could have been the same. Yes, for both. Viewed from the angle that for the sake of my daughter's marriage, going off well without any hindrance, I had risked the lives of hundreds, which was seemingly not acceptable from the moral standpoint. Yet my faith that... Um, the seva I am doing in spreading the glories of several deities and saints with wholehearted devotion towards them will afford me their protection against any adversity should justify my action from the same ethical perspective. 
it therefore needs to be mentioned in this context that with unflinching belief and ardent bhakti towards the divine beings and the spiritually exalted ones what any obstacle could be overcome and success achieved has been proved time and again in my personal life after settling the accounts at the marriage hall and while leaving the place with my family to my home a staff member handed to my wife a cover asking whether it was for me and saying that it had been received there even before our arrival at the kalyana mandapam the cover had my name on it and presuming it to be a greeting message it was put in the handbag when we departed from there on reaching triplicane we had darshan of shri parthasarthi swami and shri guru raja my heart melting at their mercy in saving me and my family and many others from a calamitous situation later i telephoned to the marriage hall to find out whether inf- any information had been received about the steps taken by the police the manager said everything is over and we have installed a telephone instrument with the caller id facility if something comes to our knowledge we shall inform you even sri vairamuthu is anxious to know of any developments in this regard a friend of mine at that moment suggested that sri hanumant dadasan's help could be sought to get some clues like the telephone number the location from where the call came and certain other relevant details through agastya jeevanadi uh, prognostication since he was writing in magazines his astrological predictions based on that medium i was of course hesitant about it why are you hesitant please the friend asked it's nothing i said though i was pondering whether i should approach him or not in fact i had not consulted him any time about my affairs when part 7 of shri raghavendra mahimai was being released he spoke a few words and at that time had said that he had of his own seen for my sake the palm leaf reading of agastya jeevanadi which had the indication that i was the rebirth of appanacharya and that he was then sharing that covert information with the audience even before hanumad dasan some people had told me the same in the light of my relentless efforts at propagating the glory of sri raghavendra but i had never taken such compliments seriously however in order to know who had sent the bomb blast warning i approached hanumad dasan for the first time to get some enlightenment on that the very next day hanumad dasan was at my place i was eager to know things since he had promised to see the palm leaf writings at the brahma muhurtam time he told me it was not for you it was for sri vairamuthu that it had come let it be for anybody but what i wanted to know was where it had come from the number the call had come from and who had done that if these are known it must be possible to conclude as to whom it was intended for therefore i request you to again see the palm leaf writings and tell me the exact revelations i said next day neither he came nor was there any information from him so i myself got in touch with him but without telling me about what i had asked him to find out he only repeated whatever he had said earlier though i had visited adoni often en route to mantralaya my visit to ranamandala was triggered by what anumad dasan had told me of his experience there and the guidance that he had from the agastinadi it may be recalled here that in part 5 i have written about these at great length i started wondering why hanumad dasan had not given me proper reply resorting to the palm leaf writing of agastinadi the indication given by him appearing to be based only on presumption as evident from his statement what was received was not meant for you it made me think whether he knew from the agastinadi about the individual responsible for the mischief and surmising that i may not be able to bear the shock of it if it was divulged had concealed the truth enlightened by the agastinadi however the matter now stands forgotten 
as Sri Hanumat Dasan is no more with us, having passed away on 26-10-2010. That evening, I was seeing the greetings, messages, and at that moment, my wife brought the cover she had put in her handbag when we were leaving the marriage hall. The cover had the typed superscription, Urgent Attention, Mr. Amman Satyanathan. But there was no indication thereon of the sender's name. And when the envelope was opened, the typed letter inside began with the words, Hare Srinivasa, and the reading of it caused a chillness pass through my spine. It appeared to have been written by one knowing me well, someone well aware of my writings too. The unsigned letter conveyed that I should immediately stop my daughter's marriage with an indication that it was from a well-wisher. Needless to say that if he were a real well-wisher, he could have told me this in person or even sent the marriage a message as an anonymous letter to me immediately after the betrothal function that took place on 11 2 2008 Obviously, his evil intention was to prevent the marriage taking place and that is the only plausible reason for his sending it by post in such a way as to get it delivered at the marriage hall on 26, 2008 on our arrival there. The Janavasam was a grand success the next day and in that busy schedule, the letter was not delivered to me. But the person who had sent it, knowing about the grandeur of the celebration, must have thought that the letter might not have reached me or that I should have put it aside, not attaching any importance to it. Therefore, it would not be incorrect to surmise that the same person would have maneuvered the threat being received over phone at the marriage hall just before the muhurtam. Sri Guru Raja, even here, had orchestrated the letter not reaching my hands, as if it would have been crea then created anxiety and jitters for me. Even if I had tried to put up a brave front, the manager's discreet message to me on the marriage day about the bomb threat received as an anonymous call would have shaken me then leading me to believe that it had really been placed somewhere in the building for the reason that the marriage had not been stopped, despite the warning letter. In such an event, I might have really carried out what the police had instructed me to do, the serious consequences of which could, be well, uh, could well be imagined. It could therefore be surmised that somebody must have engineered these just to put me or the bridegroom's father to shame. But when there is divine protection and so too the blessings of the Guru, such evil doings of others will turn out to be negatory. Of course, it may be questioned as to how the divine beings and Gurus I had been adoring had not prevented such distress and atrocious happenings, particularly when I have been writing unceasingly about their glories. As my life's mission. A couple of analogies to this may be cited here from the Ramayana. Despite the Sita kept in Ashokavana being an archetype one, the real Sita Devi being safe elsewhere, Sri Rama had crossed the sea, fought with Ravana and killed him. And although the real Sita Devi had joined Sri Rama later, they had to remain separated till then. If Sri Rama had so willed, he could have annihilated Ravana without the orchestration of such drama. But why did he not do that way? Again, when there was a fight between Vali and Sugriva, would not Sri Rama have known the identity of Vali? And was it because he was afraid of Vali's prowess that he had sent an arrow at him from behind a tree unseen by him? No, certainly not. There are, of course, many valid reasons for all these queer happenings. It may not be known to the readers that the Sita in Ashokarvanam was an unreal one, but to those ignorant of it, I suggest they are acquainting themselves with Sundaran Aruliya Sundarakandam, English version, the hidden gems in Sundarakandam, 
which would throw light on the orchestrations of the Almighty, providing the answers for all such dramas enacted by him. It's a writing based on what Sri Hanuman himself had set in writing in another avatar rupa of his, wherein he has portrayed the real happenings of the Ramayana era as seen by him at the places of their occurrence. The publication mentioned, released by Amman Padipagam, Chennai 605, has been well received by the public, as evidenced by the skyrocketing scales of both Tamil and English editions. The conclusion to be drawn from this is that what is predetermined by the Almighty as one's fate arising out of one's past actions or karma cannot be avoided and has to be gone through. But with wholehearted and soulful devotion towards the Supreme Being, all evil forces could be kept at bay. Prahlada being the standing example for it. Yes, when Prahlad Raja was fed poison by his own mother under compulsion, it was undoubtedly Sri Hari's grace that had saved him from death. I have written at length about my personal experiences only to drive home the message that in times of adversity, Sri Guru Raja will extend his helping hand and lift us from the quagmire as it were provided we are staunch in our devotion and have the resolute faith that he is the one we can always look to for succor in times of need. It was the cry of anguish from the innermost recesses of my heart that should have shaken the divine beings and the saints to protect me then. Yes, it was also the call of a tormented heart emanating from Appanacharya, that had caused Sri Raghavendra to respond to it from inside the Brindavana. Thus, with deep-seated devotion and courage at heart, if we should endeavour to accomplish things with a kind of firmness, we should not be confronting any obstacles at all. It's always my intention to present an admixture of certain experiences of the present times with some spine-chilling incidents of the past to add flavor to my writings and at the same time divine home, drive home the messages they carry. If the glory of Sri Raghavendra and his mysterious deeds are to be disseminated to the masses, an incident like the one involving Sir Thomas Munro that was beyond the narrow confines of considerations like caste, creed, language and country will indubitably carry its impact on the Plebeians. The Monroe incident carries the authenticity of a guessed notification and hence the astounding deeds of Sri Raghavendra in the happenings connected with it are ever shining. The next episode is also one concerning Sir Thomas Monroe. Mandro. The way Sri Venkatajala, the family deity of Sri Raghavendra, graces Munro for his ardent devotion and unshakable faith carries for us the message that we should also inculcate such true and unswerving bhaktis. The connected incident has definite proof of its authenticity.